Hello and welcome to part two of Tre Donne Italiane. Today's video is about Francesca Caccini. You may recognize the last name Caccini as another famous Italian composer. Francesca Caccini was born on September 18, 1587 in Florence, Italy. She grew up in a musically gifted family. Her father was the well-known composer Giulio Caccini, and both her mother, stepmother, and her younger sister were talented singers. Like Deste, check out part one if you missed it, she was born into a higher status family. However, this propelled Francesca into the spotlight. Caccini was well educated and studied Latin, rhetoric, geometry, philosophy, astrology, contemporary languages, and was trained to be the genteel woman that her society demanded. She also learned to read music and play keyboard, Spanish guitar, lute, harp, therbo, and viola. By the time she was 13, she had opportunities to perform as a singer in all woman ensembles. In October of 1600, she was offered a position serving the French court after Henry IV, King of France, heard her sing. She turned down the position, most likely because she didn't want Italians looking secondary to the French, and instead began to serve the Medici court and Fernando I, the Grand Duke of Tuscany, as an all-around musician. In 1607, Caccini was hired to compose the music for a dance piece by Michelangelo, the poet and artist. You know the guy. Also around this time, Caccini received orders from the Grand Duchess to marry Giovanni Battista Signorini. Signorini was a tenor and a string player, but he was not a wealthy man. Once they were married, they were both benefited by continuing to perform, each earning an annual salary of 120 scudi in 1607. In 1614, seven years later, Caccini's stipend increased to 240 a year, making her the highest paid musician in court. In 1618, the 30 year old Francesca Caccini published a collection of 32 pieces called Il Primo Libro delle Musiche. It combined sacred and secular pieces, solos and duets, and included various styles. She used these pieces to teach her female students vocal technique. These songs were written for women, by women, and were approved by the powerful Medici women. Caccini's compositional output also included at least 17 theatrical works and hundreds of shorter vocal works for private concerts performed by her students. Her father said that she, quote, filled three books with over 300 works with passages of invention others imagine, with the best ornaments that could come from anyone who professed solo singing. In addition to composing, Caccini also managed her own household and was a mother. In 1624, Francesca was commissioned to compose La Liberazione di Ruggiero dall'Isola d'Alcina. The work represents one of the earliest versions of opera composed by a woman in history. The piece was so well received that she was commissioned for two more stage works two years later. However, in the same year, her husband died, leaving her concerned over the custody of her daughter. So she moved to Lucca, remarried, and had another child. But her second husband died shortly after that, leaving her widowed yet again. With the help of the Medici family, she returned to Florence. In her later years, she petitioned the Medici courts for her daughter, Margarita, to be able to enjoy a singer's life. She said, a father and mother can have no greater desire than to make themselves anew in their children, leaving them heirs to their professions and virtue. Caccini's daughter entered the convent in Florence where she lived until 1690. Both Caccini and her daughter were hailed for their talented musicianship, solidifying Francesca's 40-year career as a composer, singer, and teacher through her daughter, who continued her musical legacy. While the details of her death are not confirmed, it's believed that she died just south of Lucca in August of 1646 at 59 years old. I really hope you guys have been enjoying this mini-series as much as I have. Stay tuned for part three and give this video a big thumbs up. See you next time.